Richard Boyle, the third Earl of Burlington, arrived home at London in 1715, just in time for his 21st birthday. Shortly after, he learned about the publication of Vitruvius Britannicus, a work expounding theories about classical architecture. It had been written and illustrated by Scottish architect Colin Campbell, who had been in turn inspired by the works of 16th century Venetian architect Andrea Palladio, 1508 to 1580. The young Earl was determined to address these ideas. He was inspired by the thought that he could become the patron of the Palladian style in England and determinedly he set off again in 1719 to go back to Italy with the specific intention of studying Palladio's buildings first hand. During the 16th century Andrea Palladio had been an avid student of first century Roman architect Marcus Polio Vitruvius whose architectural treatise had survived intact from antiquity and was rediscovered by Italian humanist Poggio Bracciolone during the 15th century in a search of monastery libraries. Palladio's villas dotted throughout the countryside of Veneto in Italy were built for wealthy clients as a retreat from the pressures and profanities of city life. It is easy to understand why the young Earl from England was so captivated when he viewed Palladio's La Rotunda. It was so different to anything he had ever encountered before in England. It impressed all who saw it, and still does today. Its classical purity and simple lines are balanced by a harmonious proportion. It delights the eye perfectly sighted on its small hill, looking out thanks to four equal prospects on the surrounding landscape. It was perfectly positioned for those wishing to see and be seen, and it became a role model for those in pursuit of the perfect house. When he had seen it, the youthful Richard Boyle hastened home, taking with him eager artists who would assist his personal quest and cause. Italian sculptor Giovanni Battista Guelfi, who would produce much of his garden statuary. Violinist Pietro Castrucci, who would entertain he and his friends. Then there was William Kent, a young painter and designer he had met along the way, whose ideas and enthusiasm dovetailed perfectly with his own. William Kent would become his soulmate for life. Richard Boyle brought back 878 pieces of luggage containing numerous treasures to furnish his own perfect Palladian house. These included paintings, statues, objets de virtu, bar reliefs, a marble table, porphyry vases and 12 miniatures, not to mention a set of silver dessert baskets from Paris many books and 14 pairs of gloves. When he arrived back at London, Richard Boyle financed the publication of Colin Campbell's second volume of Vitruvius Britannicus, as well as Andrea Palladio's guidebook to Rome and its antiquities. Both texts ensured that Richard Boyle would have a profound influence on the future of architectural design. He set out to and achieved a minimum standard of excellence in all matters pertaining to buildings in the Palladian style in England, one that would persist throughout the 18th century. He was successful because Palladio's architecture had combined classical authority and dignity with practical application, as at the villa at Masseur, and the formula worked very well in England. Like their ancient Greek counterparts, the designers and builders of Palladian-style country house buildings in England considered the geography and the environment when making an architectural intervention. Poet Alexander Pope, 1688-1744, believed that Richard Boyle was the first owner of importance who, in his quest for nature, consulted the genius of the place and respected its natural contours. 
Cheswick Villa was not really designed for comfort or convenience. It was sophisticated, elegant and a graceful folly that was designed for friends having fun. It was set into gardens designed by William Kent, who became the founder of the English landscape style. He provided a setting for a villa that was perfect for Burlington's diversions and amusements. Inspired by Palladio's famous La Rotunda, it dispensed with the four identical facades in favour of one. The columns on the portico were copied from those adorning the ancient temple of Castor and Pollux at Naples, which Burlington had seen and Palladio had also drawn in his own architectural treatise, I Quattro Libra della Architettura. The steps and loggia had fat stone balusters and weighty urns in the manner of other rural villas of 16th century Italy and the grand entrance gate piers were classically swagged using applied ornament. During the 18th century the word villa passed from Latin into Italian and was absorbed into English. Designer William Kent became the crucial intermediary between the older tradition of largely Italian forms of gardens and the emergence of one that from that time forward would be viewed as entirely English. His patron, the Earl of Burlington, was content in his perfect Palladian house and he remained William Kent's patron for life. In the Veneto, Andrea Palladio had created a dwelling that was both simple and solid. It reflected his clients' aspirations, their needs and leisure requirements. Today, Palladio's villas, which are visited annually by hundreds of thousands of tourists, continue to inspire the evolution of domestic architecture worldwide. A Palladian-inspired villa was meant to be, and will always remain, a place in which its owners can feel happy, secure and content, one in which they can also cultivate the head, the heart, the body and the soul.